A funny thing happened to me on my way to this review. Basically, I lost the lens. The lower box arrived at Shadowthorpe Towers, and I duly opened it. Some nice lower promo goodies, but no lens. I emailed Lauer. Unlike Panasonic and Olympus, they do reply to my emails. I got a slightly confused reply. So I did nothing. A week or two later, doing a bit of clearing up, I came across the box. There, in a corner of the box, wrapped in brown paper, was the lens. I was expecting a 10mm f2 lens, and so subconsciously expected something big and bulbous. I'd missed it. It's tiny, and if any lens owns it as highly exquisite, this does. It comes with a neat little lens hood and feels solid. Where the Lauer is different from most other lenses of its type is that it has electrical contacts, even though it is a manual focus. It takes a 46mm filter, and the lens body is 37mm deep, excluding the mount, 15mm of that being the null part of the focusing ring. There's a clear and easy to read distance and depth of field scale. My overall description of this lens will be jewel-like. Using the lens furthers the quality feel. Focusing is silky smooth and internal, so Polaroid filters are no problem. I'd have liked a bit lower gearing on the focusing ring, which can feel a little twitchy. The contacts on the rear mean that the aperture is set on the camera, so no need for an aperture ring on the lens. They also mean the lens announced itself to the camera, so that the correct stabilisation settings are invoked automatically. Manual focusing aid, magnification and peaking both work. Plus the program AE and shutter priority both function. There's so much depth of field with a lens like this that focusing is not critical. But turn on focus peaking or magnification is a cinch whatever your skill levels. It's hard to test the performance of a lens during lockdown. I don't much like charts, but I've used one here at a shooting distance of about 1.2 metres, or 4 feet, as you would when photographing a person in their surroundings. I have no qualms about using the lens wide open, but I noted that a tiny stopping down to f2.2 brought in maximum sharpness. That's true of many lenses, but it's usually more like a stop for the best results. The stopping down is really only necessary if you are making very big prints, or a pixel peeper. The edge performance of lenses as wide as this is a moot point. For out and about subjects, it isn't much of a factor, the sharp central area being the point. There's nothing wrong with the edge sharpness here, but if you insist on using such a lens for critical purposes, well, first of all, don't, but if you must, just stop down to f4. I have one particular reason for liking this lens beyond the lens itself. That is its usefulness in making a set of primes. This is the day of the zoom lens, but there will always be photographers who like the simplicity of a prime. This one, at 10mm, is the perfect focal length for building a capable, compact, street and general purpose outfit. I work on the basis of roughly doubling the focal length of each lens for a set. So, 10mm, 20 or 25 and 45mm. Those three lenses, along with a small camera body, yield a combination of size and image quality, which will cover any everyday need from architecture to portrait, and all with good dim light capability to keep the ISO down or the shutter speed up. You could sacrifice speed for versatility and replace the 25mm with a Panasonic 12-32 zoom, but given the size and weight of the zoom, you could just carry it with you anyway. All in all, another very useful contribution to the Micro Four Thirds arsenal especially when neither Olympus or Panasonic make a 10mm prime. Given the electrical contacts on this lens, I wonder if Lauer would consider making an autofocus version. Just thinking aloud. Thanks for watching.